After the release of Toy Story, Pixar became known for its groundbreaking advancements in computer technology. Despite the media rave about the company's computer animation, two of its founders, John Lasseter and Steve Jobs, had this to say about the company's success. I think Toy Story is a success, not because it's computer generated. It's a success because it has, you know, the characters of Buzz Lightyear and Woody and in the storyline that really has captivated okay. audience. But as John says, we don't view ourselves as a technology company. Our product is content. We're an entertainment company. And all this technology really is just in the service of the storytelling. Right. With more than two decades in the industry, the public's focus on Pixar's technology took a back seat as audiences grew to view the company as a top-of-the-game storytelling powerhouse. Pixar's stories are creative and emotional tales capable of inspiring children and adults alike. In this video, I want to analyze how Pixar handles visual exposition, conflicting characters, and finds unique philosophical conflicts in its movies. And most importantly, how you can do the same in your writing. This is why you should study Pixar. <laughs> to infinity and beyond! In my video on understanding exposition, I have said that when handling exposition, you should show and not tell. Pixar is a master of show, don't tell. Its diverse catalog of silent short films proves that engaging stories can be told solely through the use of visuals. And nowhere is their talent for show don't tell clearer than in the first act of Wally. -E. During the movie's first 30 minutes, Pixar establishes the story's setting, characters, and conflict with very few lines of dialogue. This may seem extreme, but it's this level of commitment to visual exposition that has solidified Wally and Eve in the hearts of millions of viewers. In many post-apocalyptic movies, characters may spend long chunks of verbal exposition explaining how the world fell apart in intricate and often boring detail. In Wally, however, the filmmakers show us that the Earth has been evacuated due to overconsumption by using sweeping shots of the planet covered in used products. The filmmakers show us hundreds of deactivated Wallys informational panels of fleeing spaceships, and even an infomercial that shows us the humans living better and cleaner lives in space. This is not only more effective at communicating the setting, but it allows us to engage with the environment at a higher level than any dialogue-driven exposition would allow for. Since Wally cannot speak, Pixar establishes his character by visually showing us a day in his life. Pixar shows us Wally's joy of collecting trash, his kindness to his cockroach friend, and his fascination with Hello Dolly. These actions inform us of Wally's beliefs. The audience is able to feel that Wally is a wide eyed, hopeless romantic instead of being told so. Aww. When writing expositions, as much as possible, show don't tell. Find ways to give the information to the audience in a visual way. A great exercise is to practice visual exposition by writing a few silent short films. By forcing yourself to not use dialogue, you will find new ways to deliver exposition. In my video on the purpose of conflict, I've talked about the web of characters. This is a way to create and group characters that have opposing or complementary beliefs in order to naturally change their views and produce meaning. Many of Pixar's movies are known for pairing their protagonists with characters that are their polar opposites. Marlin and Dory, Mike and Sully, Remy and Linguini. These are not only iconic character duos, but character pairings that naturally create conflict within them. Let's take a look at the original Toy Story. The movie pairs up Woody, a selfish and egocentric cowboy, with a selfless and unaware space ranger. A what? What? These are plastic. He can't fly. They are a terillium carbonic alloy, and I can fly. No, you can't. In any other story, this could be an entertaining pairing, but it wouldn't create truly meaningful conflict. A lot of writers focus on pairing up their protagonist with a character that is opposite to them in terms of personality. They match goofy characters with straight men, or meanies with sweethearts. However, even though personality clashes can be fun, these writers never consider their characters' beliefs. Personality is a part of the internal level of stories, 
but beliefs are part of the philosophical level, which is needed for meaningful narratives. Pixar takes opposing characters to a philosophical level. Toy Story deals with the philosophical conflict of the importance of the individual versus the importance of the community. Woody believes in the importance of the individual and sees himself as unique and deserving the love of Andy. Then you'll see. I'm still Andy's favorite toy. Thus, in order to challenge his beliefs, Pixar placed him with someone that not only clashed with his personality, but also diametrically opposed his beliefs. Buzz believes in the importance of the community above that of the individual and always looks for a way to make their lives better. This opposition of beliefs is what allows the duo of Woody and Buzz to be so powerful. Woody's beliefs are able to complement Buzz's and vice versa. When Buzz learns that he is not a real space ranger, it is Woody that reassures him of his individual worth. Whoa, hey, wait a minute. Being a toy is a lot better than being a, a space ranger. Yeah, right. No, it is. Look, over in that house is a kid who thinks you are the greatest, and it's not because you're a space ranger, pal. It's because you're a toy. You are his toy. And when Woody is hopeless about escaping Sid, it's Buzz that compliments his beliefs by encouraging them to work together as a community. Buzz, what are you doing? I thought you Come on, Sheriff. There's a kid over in that house who needs us. Now let's get you out of this thing. Yes, sir. In your writing, go beyond the external and internal personality differences of your characters. Characters with different personalities are important and can lead to entertainment, but different personalities are not enough for meaningful stories. Instead, meaningful stories arise when you focus on your character's philosophical beliefs and how they differ from one another. At the end of my video on how to structure your screenplay, I have said that stories should be an exploration of who you are. We must take a journey into the abyss and explore what we actually want to say about life. This is where mediocre or generic stories fail. They settle for common or uninteresting philosophical conflicts. A great case study for a unique philosophical conflict is Inside Out. Inside Out's director, Peter Docter, spent years during the story's early development set on the idea that the movie's philosophical conflict was about joy versus fear. Because of that, he focused on the characters of joy and fear as they tried to get back to headquarters. The story had a lot of fun set pieces and a funny dynamic between joy and fear, but ultimately, when it came down to the thematic conclusion of the film, Doctor didn't know what he had to say about fear. He did not have an honest perspective on the philosophical conflict that he was tackling. That's when Doctor had to take a break. The story was not working. He went out for a long walk in the park by himself and reflected on why he was making this movie in the first place. This led to him looking back at his own life. Doctor realized that the philosophical conflict he was working with was not honest to his life. He was trying to argue about the importance of joy over fear. However, while taking a journey to the abyss, he realized the most important people in his life are not the ones he shared happy moments with. Instead, the most important people were the ones he shared a range of emotions with, including sadness. So that gives me this idea that maybe joy as much as we all want it in our lives, is not the answer. The answer is actually sadness. This cleared up the story he wanted to tell. The story was not about joy versus fear, where joy ended up being more powerful than fear. Instead, the philosophical conflict was that of joy versus sadness, with the theme being about the hidden importance of sadness. By taking this unconventional approach, especially in a story for younger audiences, Doctor found a conflict that was far more unique than what he had previously thought of. This was done by not settling in his initial idea, and instead taking the journey into the abyss. In your own writing, as much as you can, you should never settle for an obvious or uninteresting philosophical conflict. Instead, just like Doctor, take the journey into the abyss and discover what life views are truly honest and unique to you. This will allow you to find your emotional truths. What started out as a technology company has blossomed into a storytelling powerhouse. Pixar is living proof that it does not matter what kind of technology is in the movie market. Nothing can beat good storytelling. And you can learn from Pixar. You can learn how to show and not tell in your exposition. 
You can learn how to create conflicting characters, and you can learn how to take a journey into the abyss in order to find unique philosophical conflicts. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe, and check out the video's description if you are struggling with writer's block and procrastination. You'll find a video linked below that will help you actually get your drafts out onto the page quickly and easily. This video was written by Alberto Hallfeld, a member of the Practical Screenwriting team.